Okay. Usually I don't have these enabled. Okay. So, we got a drum kit and it plays. Now, it's all about the next stage is all about mixing and routing. Where the routing part of Superior Drummer plugin is the more complicated one. It's even more complicated than mixing, actually. It's ridiculous. But first, uh, let's set up the plugin to have a final, uh, a final drum setup. As you can see here, there are many humanized options or envelopes and layer limits. Um, let's check those for a second. So you have um, layer limits. This this means that um, you can limit the voices of a single drum part uh, to a maximum number. So if you strike a cymbal, for example, and you strike it again, um, and the the first hit is not yet finished, it still sustains, then you can adjust the layer limit. If you, if you hit the cymbals like eight times in a row, then you don't want to, uh, to kill the sample before instantly. That would sound very artificial. Um, if you choose a large voice or layer limit, then uh, you need more CPU power to run the plugin and you need more RAM. But usually what I do on my i7 here is I disable the layer limits on my drum parts completely. I got the power. I got the power! So let's do that for every drum part. And you can already see that um, my RAM, my used RAM here, starts to increase a little bit. See that? Now it's 1,929. So it l just loads more samples into the RAM, right? But my computer can do that. And what I do usually on my symbols is a layer limit of eight on toms and snare i have a layer limit of five and kick i got four so let's do that so everything uh sounds natural eight so all the symbols got eight the snare we only need five because uh the snare toms and kicks they don't have that much sustain compared to symbol. A symbol rings out much longer, you know. So, and the kick has four. All right, so that's the basic setup. What you can do here is clear the RAM. Then it reloads only the samples that uh, the plugin actually needs. And this is 1.5 gigabyte of RAM. That's quite a bunch, right? For this drum kit. Uh, on my... Other drum kit, wonder or wonder, it's the same amount, but the total used samples is a little bit higher. It's interesting, right? Okay. So we, we got our drum kit and we got an our drum layer sounds. Let's listen to it again. Sounds like total crap so far, but that's okay. Good. What I usually check is that the symbols are equally loud. If you for uh, if you go ahead and choose, let's say you choose a symbol from the Metal Foundry package and another symbol from the original Superior superior drummer package or from the metal machinery SDX or even an EasyX uh, library, then the volumes of the symbol may differ a little bit. 
um, what you then, or what, what you can do in this case is you select the, uh, the louder or the quieter symbol and you bring up or down the volume of this symbol sound here a little bit to match all symbols. But I, f I, I feel like uh, the volumes of the symbols are pretty well balanced. They are too loud compared to the toms and snare and kick, you know. Uh, but but that's that's uh, something you you solve in the mixer. But as a starting point, you have to look that your cymbals are balanced in volume. Hi-hat can be mixed differently, so you don't have to check the hi-hat uh, against the cymbals. That sounds, that sounds really okay for me here. All right. So, what next? Now to the mixer. Now things get a little bit more complicated, maybe. Um, let's go here, mute this, so it doesn't eat up CPU power. If I play back my MIDI track here, then we can see uh, some things here. What can we see? We see that the kick drum and snare drum microphones of the Superior Drummer Metal Foundry plugin are not used because I don't use snare and kick from the Metal Foundry Easy X. There's not coming anything out of these microphones. So what we can do is we can turn them off. I usually do that so that I know this track or this microphone is not used in my tone. Like, this is our final goal. As you can see here, every microphone that I don't use on a particular library is turned off. And even I assign none to the bosses. So this microphone is not even connected to any sort of drum bus within the plugin. I'm going to do that for my case here too. I'm going to remove all the microphone bleed, set all the buses to none. This is a lot of clicking, but it helps. If you, if you go ahead and uh, recheck the plugin, if you like, if you, if you're mixing, if you're mixing a song and you're in the drum mixing and you open up the plugin, let's say I'm I'm loading up my project here and I'm getting into my Superior Drummer uh, track here, open up Superior, get into the mixer, then I immediately see, okay, uh, I don't have to care about those tracks here because they're disabled, right? So this is just something I do uh, in terms of knowing what channels are really used within the plugin because I cannot uh, I cannot get rid of these channels in the plugin. There's no uh, no setting that I can like switch these unused microphones to invisible. They are always visible in, in the mixer. That would be a, a really nice feature to get rid of unused uh, microphone tracks. Hear me, tune track, please. Okay, but the hi-hats are used. The hi-hats actually are used. I need my my other plugin here to to recheck what I do. <laughs> okay, my hi-hats are used back here. My Rectum 1 is not used, so I'm going to disable that. And my Floor, tom to uh, my floor tom 2 is, again, not used. 
Rectum 2, 3, and Flotum 1 co are coming through uh, Metal Foundry. So that's good. I use overheads. I don't use the drummer overhead because uh, there's no bleed for this. No, we don't need that. This is a mono microphone and it sounds weird. So I'm not going to use that. Uh, I can show you how these sound like. No, it, it, um, the feature that you can uh, make tracks or unused microphone channels invisible is not announced. It was just an idea of myself. It it would be a nice feature. Cheers, everybody. It would be a nice feature to have, actually. It, it would uh, contribute to the usability of the mixer because there are so many tracks that I really don't use, so it would be nice to get rid of them. In this view here, you could half the amount of the uh, microphone channels, actually. Okay. So... The ambient close mic, I don't like that on metal mixes. We can uh, we can listen to those microphones one at a time, but for the time being, I'm gonna disable it. The ambient far microphone I use. There's bleed on it, bleed on the overhead, bleed on the ambient far. Mono, I don't use mono mono channels. Maybe that's some kind of professional thing, but I never used mono mono overhead or ambient mics on my drum sounds ever. It just uh it just destroys the stereo image in my opinion. I want to to have my drum kit sound very wide and open, and if I use mono overhead sounds pan to the center of the sound what what of what use is that? I don't get it. Maybe I'm too unprofessional to understand what's going on with those mono mics. I don't know. <laughs> the chamber sound or the chamber microphone provides some decent tones in some situations, but on metal drums, I don't like it that much. I, I fiddled around with it the last time I, I set up my drum tone, but I don't really like the outcome. It does not contribute to the overall drum tone in a way that I like. So I'm not going to use the microphone channel. So these were all the microphones that we use out of the Metal Foundry package. So no kick, no kick left, no kick out, no snare mic. We use hats, Rectum 2, Rectum 3, Flotum 1, the overhead microphone, the far ambient microphone and that was it that was it so we're only using one one two three four five six microphones out of 21 i only use six microphones out of 21 of the metal foundry package and now it would be great if i could get rid of the other 15 because i don't use the channels why should i why should I uh, show them in the mixer here if I don't use them? Okay, now we got the part of the EZX channels. These are all my microphones from here to here from my metal exclamation mark EZX expansion. So there is a possibility that the kick drum and snare drum microphones are used in this library, right? So let's take a look. Ah. So we could we could rename uh, we could rename those tracks that we know uh, what we are messing with. So for example, I could uh, call this M hats. MR2 for Metal Foundry or MF, 
Donnell. Let's call it MF. So I know uh, if I'm messing with with microphone inputs and buses, I know where this these channels come from. Because we got an overhead microphone from the Metal Foundry package, and we got an overhead and ambient microphone from the EasyX package. And to uh, distinguish between those two, uh, when it comes to routing, you need a different name, right? So I'm going to call that MF overhead. Uh, MF amp. I know that is it's the far ambient microphone, and that was it. Let's do the same on our EZX microphones here. So, which channels do I use from the EZX? I use. I'm not using the hats. I'm not using the toms because my toms uh, are coming from the metal foundry. So I can disable those. Rack tom, floor tom, floor tom. The, these are all channels that I don't need. All right. Um, I use the overhead, the ambient, and the ambient, not the compression. So I can get rid of this. Disable it, disable the bleed, turn that off. All right. Now let's rename these real quick. That I know. Let's call that um, MF underscore was for Metal Foundry. Let's call this only Metal. So M kick uh, left. No, that was right. Shit. That was the right kick here. M underscore kick left. Then we got the M underscore snare. Uh, we had got no Hyatt, no rack toms, no floor toms. Here is the M overhead. The M underscore ambient microphone. And we don't use the compression. So now we can distinguish between the overhead channel of the metal exclamation mark easy X and the ambient mic and the overhead an ambient mic of the Superior Drummer Metal Foundry package, right? Good. The next thing we have to do is uh, to set up what parts of the drum kit bleed through the overhead and ambient mics. Usually, if you have an overhead microphone above your drum kit, the whole kit bleeds through this microphone. The whole kit is kind of recorded by this microphone. In Superior Drummer, you have the, the ability to choose actually which part of your drum kit is recognized by the overhead and ambient microphones. That is a great feature because that is something you cannot do in real life. You can't just go ahead and say something like, um... My snare drum sounds weird on the overhead microphones, so I just turn it off. That is something you cannot do in real life. You always have, have your snare on your overhead microphone, right? It's always on there. You cannot gate it out or anything. But I can do that in Superior Drummer, and that's a really nice feature. It enables me to get a better sound, a re more refined sound, very easy. So let's see. Uh, let's review the bleed settings here. On my metal foundry overhead microphones, what do I want to have on this microphone? The only parts that I use from the metal foundry package are the toms and the cymbals. So I don't have to enable bleed from the snare or the kick through my metal foundry overhead microphones. This is not necessary because I'm not using the kick or the snare so uh, samples of metal foundry. So what I can do here is I can get rid of all the bleed channels that I don't need. Um, this is 
this is the part where you can lower the CPU usage of the plugin. If you're saying, okay, this is my overhead channel of Metal Foundry, but I only got over, uh, I got only symbols and tom toms that bleed through it. What use is it to enable the kick and the snare channel? Makes no sense because they are muted anyway. And now you have to differentiate between the extrums, the extrum channel channels, and the actual kick channels. So let's take a look at this. This is my uh, my my right my right kick drum. My right X drum. It's called X drum one. It's not really the kick right. The kick right would be this one behind all this here. This this is my my metal foundry kick, but I don't use it in my plugin because I X drummed in my kick drum. So what I don't use on my overhead, I don't use the kick, I don't use the left kick, I don't use the snare because these are coming from metal exclamation mark. I don't really use the hats because the hats are extrumed. Rectums, disable it. You don't need it. And now here is the interesting part. Here we got our two symbols, our two crash symbols and the China. This crash symbol is this one. This crash symbol 5, X9, is this one. This is our X drum 9. And the X10 China 2 is this one, X drum 10. So these are selected to bleed through or to get recognized by the overhead. You cannot disable it because, sure, on the overhead microphones, symbols get through the overhead microphones. You cannot disable this. But now I can go ahead and say, okay, do I want to ha have my hi-hats on the overhead microphone? Do I want to have my rack toms and floor toms on the overhead microphone of Metal Foundry? And yes, I want that. I want to have them on there. So let's, uh, let's enable this overhead track here. Solo it. And let's take a listen to what that sounds like. Symbols. Oh, toms. So the toms bleed through the overhead microphone. Okay. This is only the overhead microphone. There's no snare and no kick because uh, the snare and kick come from another library, right? But what I could do here now is I can say no. My overhead microphone does not pick up the toms and the hi-hats. So if I play again, I only got cymbals. But no toms and no hi-hats anymore. Only cymbals. This is the great part. This is not possible in real life, right? So. Okay. So we got the bleed set up for our overhead microphone in Metal Foundry. Let's step one. Let's get one step further here and uh, select the bleed for the ambient mic off uh, of the Metal Foundry. And again, I want to have all symbols bleed through the ambient mic and all rack toms and even the hi hats, maybe at a lower rate. So let's see. First, I'm going to disable everything. Now I'm going to select what should bleed through the ambient microphone. I want to have my, my rack tom and my floor tom on the ambient microphone. Let's see how that sounds like. Okay, sounds a little bit roomy. You can actually hear how far away this ambient microphone is from the drum kit. It's interesting, right? I want my hi-hats to bleed through the ambient microphone.
but ma maybe at a lower rate, right? So maybe I want to have the hi-hats not that loud on the ambient microphone. So I can pull this down here a little bit. Let's say to uh, to like minus minus 7.5 because it's too loud. And this again is something you cannot do in real life too because you cannot adjust how loud a drum part bleeds through a, a, a different microphone. You can adjust the microphone placement to grab like different parts of your kit more uh, more likely, but you cannot get rid of a tone of a special drum part. You cannot say that the uh, second rectum bleeds not at the same volume through the microphone, uh, of, through the ambient microphone compared to the first rectum or even the floor tom. But I can do this in this plugin here. And what I want to do uh, next is the ambient microphone should pick up my cymbals. So let's enable these. Symbol 2, symbol 5, and the China 2. And here we are. Okay. So my overhead and ambient mics uh, mics of Metal Foundry pick up my rack toms, my cymbals, and the hi hat. This is exactly what I want. Good. Let's take a look at the overhead and ambient mics from Metal Easy X. And this looks a little bit different because the only parts that I use of the Metal Easy X bundle is uh, are the snare and the kick drums. So the only part I can select to bleed through the overhead of the Metal Easy X overhead microphone is the kicks and the snare. And this is what it sounds like. Solo. Okay. And let's check that on the ambient microphone. Again, because I only use the kick and snare of the EZX expansion, these are the only parts I can select for bleeding through the ambient microphone. Let's listen to that. Hey, Mr. Severoth, welcome, man. Thanks for joining again. So this sounds like a like a cool ambient microphone right there. Okay. So we got everything set up. We got the bleed set up. We got our microphones set up. We chose what microphones we actually are using. We disabled the microphones that we don't use. And let's let's for example check out some of the microphones that we could use, but um, where I decided that I don't want to have the microphones on my sound. For example, the mono close microphone. How would that sound like if I enabled it? So let's choose the output and enable all the bleed on the microphone. How does this microphone sound? Why, why should I use this mono sound on my drum kit sound? I want stereo width. I want the drum kit to sound wide and fat and huge. And I don't see any good use of this microphone on my metal mix. So I'm going to leave it disabled, right? Pull it down. Disable the bus. And... The chamber I said before can sound cool. Let's check it. How that sounds. So, 
Let's. So this is more like the reverb channel maybe, but since I own very good reverb plugins myself, I want to add them later on um, outside of the Superior Drummer plugin. I can use this chamber plugin to add this reverb tail on the snare and the kick, for example. If you're really into metal or death metal, they, they usually use a lot of reverb on the kicks. And uh, if you want that nice snare hit tail, the sustain of the snare, this comes usually from such a chamber channel. But as I said before, I own the CSR uh, reverb from IK Multimedia, and I do like those more than this reverb chamber channel. And um, you're going to see me add in some reverb later. So I'm going to disable this microphone here again. Okay. Okay. Uh, now with all the all the channel channels disabled that we don't like and all the channels enabled that we like and all the bleeds set up correctly, let's see how the drum kit sounds like. This is already not that bad. If you look at the plugin, I don't use any internal plugins, EQs, filters, compressors whatsoever. I don't use any of those. And uh, for that, in my opinion, the sound is pretty darn good already, right? Sure, the overheads are a little bit too loud, the high is a little bit too loud and everything, but the snare already has some punch to it, the kick already has some punch to it. And it's and it's it, it's it's nice. Let's take a listen to this uh, to the toms here. <laughs> they sound very natural already. If you if you're into this kind of music where you like this natural sounding uh, open tom toms and snares you you are already at a very good spot. You didn't even need to EQ that very much. Maybe pull pull out the boxiness at 400 hertz a little bit. But the toms sound already pretty good. And this is a great example for all those dickheads, sorry, <laughs> that tell something like, ah, oh, Superior Drummer, the plugin, it sounds so unnatural. It sounds so digital, so electronically. What the fuck? You just don't know what you're doing. So shut the fuck up, please. Thank you. No, honestly, really, honestly, this is a very natural drum sound here. So, if you think about that, um, I mean, that's, that's a great discussion, but People stating that Superior Drummer or all the all the other drum plugins like like Stephen Slate and uh, Native in Instruments are sounding digital. This is complete n nonsense. Why? Because the samples in Superior Drummer are mic'd real drums. Real mic'd drums with microphones and preamps and audio interfaces and shit and a million dollar studio 
it's real. So it's not digital. It's digital, but real. But not, but real, you know. You get me? Can we get over this? I'm so sick of this discussion under my YouTube videos, really. Everyone, there are always these trolls. Oh, you're using superior drama. This drum kit sounds like shit because it's digital. Come on, guys.